In the 1880s, Hoosiers read about natural gas discoveries in Ohio and wondered if the gas field might extend into Indiana. Prospectors began drilling in dozens of places and struck gas in 1886 in Portland, Indiana, just west of the Ohio border. Residents cheered when the gas was ignited and a giant flare, called a flambeau, lit up the night sky. Flambeau became a familiar sight. Promoters burned gas night and day, sometimes for years, to advertise the supply. In 1887, S.S. Gorby, the state geologist, warned this practice was foolish and wasteful. Would a coal mine owner set his mine on fire, he argued, just to prove he had coal and it would burn? Most people ignored him. That first Portland well set in motion a series of life-changing events for Elwood Haynes, who locals said was always putting together odd and seemingly useless contrivances. At 15, he built a crude furnace in his parents' backyard to make hydrogen and chlorine. There were more than a few explosions. Elwood made many mistakes and received many hurts, remembered his brother. When the well struck gas in Portland, Haynes, now a chemistry professor, quickly saw the fuel's potential. He tested gas and soil samples, invested in a gas utility, and served as its first superintendent. Haynes tinkered in a small lab above his office to solve the new industry's engineering challenges. Over the next several years, he invented devices to transport gas over long distances and thermostats for homes and businesses. Haynes moved to another gas belt city, Kokomo, in 1892. When he tired of traveling by horse and buggy to inspect pipelines, he decided to build a self-propelled vehicle. He worked out of his kitchen at first, to his wife's dismay, strapping a gasoline-powered boat engine to sawhorses. Later, he hired local mechanics to build his machine. On July 4, 1894, Haynes test drove his Pioneer, one of the first American motor cars, on Pumpkin Vine Pike. In 1898, Haynes formed the first American car company, Haynes Apperson, and for years, his Kokomo factory turned out thousands of cars. In his home laboratory, he experimented with metals to create new alloys for auto parts. In 1907, he patented an alloy he named Stellite. It was a hard, rust-resistant metal that had dozens of uses. The company he founded is still producing Stellite today, this time for the aerospace industry. The Indiana gas boom propelled Haynes beyond pipelines and pumping stations to automobile manufacturing and inventions in metallurgy. He invented to solve immediate problems, yet he also tinkered and tested new ideas that became widely used products for 20th century industry. Haynes was perhaps the best known example of the many Hoosier inventors who thrived in the Indiana gas belt.